Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. In this video we're going to be finding out about microscopes. If you are new here then click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest content. So in this lesson we're going to be looking at how microscopy techniques have developed over time, how electron microscopy has increased the understanding of the inside structures of a cell, and looking at what we mean by magnification and resolution and how those differ between light and electron microscopes. So you do need to know a little bit about the history of the microscope. You could be asked to label the different structures and the parts of a microscope because it is one of your required practicals to know how to use a microscope. So we've got that there on this image. Now light microscopes were actually first developed in the mid 17th century. So they have been around for a long time. And cells are very, very small. They're the basic building blocks that make up all organisms. But most of them can only actually be seen with a microscope because they're so small. Microscopes continue to develop. And it was in the 1930s that the electron microscope was developed. Now, the electron microscope has a much higher magnification and resolving power compared to the light microscope. And we'll go through later on what those two terms mean. But what it meant for the use of microscopes is we were now able not just to see the cells, but to see the inside of cells. And we call that the subcellular structures. So if we have a look at some of the properties of light microscopes. So the way they work is a beam of light is used to create the image. They can magnify up to 2,000 times, so that means whatever you're looking at can be viewed 2,000 times bigger. That's the microscope that you'll be using in your school. And there's two reasons why. First of all, they're much cheaper and they're much easier to use. With the light microscope, you can actually view living and non-living specimens. And that's what we can see over here. The top diagram, we have a live nematode worm. And down here at the bottom, this is actually a live leech that we're looking at. You can also see that you can get colour images with the light microscope. But we can't really see the details of the cells or any individual cells. And that's where the electron microscope is much, much more useful. Now, the way it creates an image is by releasing a beam of electrons. Now, electrons have a much shorter wavelength than light. And that is why that we get this much higher magnification. We can actually magnify 2 million times. They're very, very big and expensive and much more complicated to use. You can't actually use live specimens on these microscopes. The reason for that you learn at A level, but essentially it's because you have to have a vacuum for this microscope to work. And a vacuum is when you've removed all of the air. So you couldn't have anything living in that. The images that are produced are always black and white. You can, though, artificially colour that image in Photoshop, for example. And that's what we can see in this diagram above. They've put colours onto that black and white image. Now, there's two different types of electron microscopes. There's one that's called a transmission electron microscope. And that's what we can see down here at the bottom, the results of you get these 2D images. A scanning electron microscope gives a 3D image, and that's what we can see on the top one, this 3D image of E. coli and cocci bacteria. The lower image from the transmission electron microscope has got this image of mitochondria, which are the subcellular structures. Now, if we have a look at what these two key terms, magnification and resolution, actually mean, Magnification is how many times bigger the image looks compared to the actual size of objects. Resolution is the ability to see two different points as separate. And basically that is to do with how crisp and clear the image looks. So the higher the resolving power of a microscope, the more detail you can see in your image. And that's why the electron microscopes you are able to see these subcellular structures in detail because you can magnify more and you have this higher resolution so you get a clearer image. So just to show you the comparison, the resolving power, which is linked to the resolution, 
and the resolving power of the light microscope is 200 nanometers. The scanning electron microscope is 10 nanometers and a transmission electron microscope is 0.2 nanometers. So that means you can still see two objects as separate when they are only the distance away from each other of two atoms. So that is a very, very high resolving power. So that is it for our microscopy lesson. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up.